In the name of science, today we are going to be using EMG technology in order to determine what's going to get you the biggest boulder shoulders outside of just gear. Seriously though, we're going to test which exercises are going to give us the best stimulatory response using these small devices that we're going to put on my delts. We're going to do lateral head, front delt head, and rear delt, and we're gonna test some exercises and see what gives us the best response. So, while EMG is not a perfect science, it does give us a good idea of what is going to drive as much what's called neural response in that specific tissue. So, if you're getting no spikes, it means basically that tissue is not activating. So, it's great for this type of exercise, no pun intended, where you are doing the exercise and determining how much response on these readouts we're gonna be getting and I will share the results. We're gonna do not only what is the highest spike, but also what is the total response over the course of the rep. So without further ado, let's get it. We are going to have the sentencers on the front, the lateral and the rear delt. We've got yellow, blue, green. So every single exercise we're gonna be testing on this, what is gonna give us the best response by muscle group. So it's gonna be really cool because we might find that some have really good responsiveness in the lateral head, some in the rear head, some in the front delt. So I think that a lot of our raising movements in that kind of horizontal plane is gonna be the best for lateral. But let's start there. Let's go with a dumbbell. We're gonna start with a very light isolated raise and then we're gonna try kind of a more cheat raise to see what's better. I'm very interested in this. We're gonna start with 30s. And what I wanna do here is do a seated variant just to make it really controlled. We're gonna go straighter on the arms here, which is how I like to do my raises with a nice eccentric control. So big stretch underneath, slow eccentric control. Two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Some of the form cues I'm using, you see I lean forward to get that extra stretch, sit up on it, pop the chest open, nice squeeze the top, slow eccentric, really trying to basically hold on to that stimulatory response and try to keep tension in that lateral head by trying to minimizing trap engagement by keeping the shoulders down. So this is something I would recommend highly if you guys are doing delts. Try to keep the shoulders down to get keep the tracks as uninvolved as possible. So looks like we got some really good data there. Let's check this out. So this looks terrific. Everything is looking like it's reading perfectly crazy response. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go heavier, probably closer to 50, a little more bend in the elbows. So a little bit more of this form here, and we'll see what gives us more of a response as compared to the 30s, lighter with more strict form. Okay, all sensors are good. We're gonna grab the 50s, we're gonna go standing on these. So a little bit more of an explosive form, a little more elbow bend on here, a little bit more frontal plane, still a decent eccentric control. <sighs> Still trying to keep the shoulders down. Try to keep the traps as uninvolved as possible. Let's go for eight. I don't feel nearly as much acute tension as I do in the more controlled, but who knows? Maybe that's not quite as important in terms of my muscle connection as getting as much load in the target muscle group. Load. All right, now we're gonna do one of my favorites, lying laterals. So what we're gonna do here is lie all the way best. We got the dual handle. We're gonna try to arch the back for track scaps. And we're gonna do nice, true lateral, slight elbow bend, about 170 degrees with the angle with the arms. So as I see, arch back, pull shoulders down and back, slight elbow bend, and we're gonna raise up. Good tempo, slow eccentric. As you can see, same cueing here, trying to keep the traps as uninvolved as possible, Just keeping the shoulders down and back. A lot of people, when they raise, they'll start to lift the shoulders, and that's gonna take it all into the traps. You might still have some lateral engagement, head engagement, but that's why a lot of people have more developed traps than they do delts is because they want to go too heavy and they start taking over their traps. Looks pretty on par with our dumbbell raises. Okay, next we're hitting a cable Y raise. So similar to the line raise, but now we're going to be kind of lifting the hands in more of a Y formation. My thought process here, we still get a tremendous lateral head. Front head will likely be almost off. And then rear delt will actually get a decent amount from this as well, based on my thought process, which can be pretty whack at times. We'll see. Uh, fuck. Okay. Let's see. So you can see I was wrong as usual. Rear delt didn't get as much as I thought, but really, really good response from the lateral and front delt, surprisingly again. So another great exercise, especially if you have some pain with dumbbells, this allows for a lot more of a, you can control that vector of force, you disable momentum, so you can have a lot more acute stimulus with less weight than if you were to do super heavy day, super heavy standing dumbbell raises. We're gonna use the next one as Arsenal lateral raise, one of my favorite machines. I'm actually gonna face 
out because I actually like the better stretch profile and it just feels a lot more ergonomic. I'm gonna give you guys a little hack on these. One of my favorite ways to do this is actually lean out on the stretch and then come up and stand straight upright and you'll see how much stretch and also contraction I get by doing that kind of form where I lean forward, isolate medial head, lateral head, and then right down into it. So the next one, we're going to do a V-grip overhand. One of my favorite kind of like upright rowing variants. And upright rowing, obviously you can go a little heavier than a raise and we'll see what kind of response it gives. <sighs> Same thing, try to keep shoulders down, keep traps out of it. <sighs> Doing last exercise day, dumbbell shoulder press. So by deduction, I would assume these are going to be mostly front delt. But the way I press with a big depth, I'm assuming I'm actually gonna get a lot of lateral head as well. So for me, I like to get down into a deep stretch on these and then nice conscious drive through front and lateral head. I like to do the bench at not quite 90 degrees. I go pretty much like 80 degrees on the bench. I'm gonna go 90 pound dumbbells here. Take these bad boys for a ride. Let's go. Oh, that's so nice. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Ooh. All right, we are going to break and send the data over to the creator himself, Rowan, and he is going to crunch the numbers and get back to us and tell us what this all means, because I'm pretty sure I've got a good grasp on this, but he's the man, the myth, the legend. Rowan, give us the data. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Oh, fancy seeing you there. It's a chill guy taking his Turk Builder. All jokes aside, if you guys want to grab your popcorn, see one of the craziest scandals in the fitness industry right now, go check out Greg's video on how HTLT supplements was with a ton of products tested, was the only product to contain real tercasterone and also met and exceeded the label claims by 40%. We actually had up to 40 times as much as the next best person in terms of tercasterone in their product. So if you guys want the real deal, go and check out HTLT supplements, you won't regret it. All right, the results are in. So for the combined data winner for front and medial delt, so we were testing total activation volume over a course of seven reps. Number one was the incline bench cable Y raise. And this is literally one of my favorite exercises. And I guess I know why now. It has a tremendous amount of stimulus. And also it has a, a ton of eccentric stimulus, meaning as I came down, you had constant tension throughout the course of the rep. So it was an amazing exercise for just total stimulus for front and medial delts. Number two, we came in with a strict lateral raise with the 30 instead of the more explosive reps with the 50. And I was actually extremely happy about this result. A little bit biased in the sense of, I always want to take a weight with maybe that's a little less with more control to drive what I always like to say, a more acute stimulus to the target muscle group. So it's exactly what happened here. Even though we had almost 200%, so about 167% of the weight for the 50s as compared to the 30s, but because my form was so strict, on those 30 pound raises, I was actually able to drive more stimulus to the front and medial delt using that lesser weight. And that came in just behind the Y raises. And in third, we had those line cable raises. So the ones I used the dual, that kind of dual handle and did those line raises. I think those are great too, because you disable any use of momentum. You can really get as much acute focus as possible with as minimal injury risk and fatigue possible. So. Front delt winner, let's go to the front delt. We had the dumbbell shoulder press, surprise, surprise, coming in first because as we know, front uh, pressing, especially in that frontal plane is gonna have a lot of front delt bias. And with that really, really deep form, good eccentric control, actually produced twice as much stimulus as more of those kind of cheat half reps. So guys, do full ROM. It's gonna help you not only with building more muscle, but keeping you healthier over time. You can use less weight drive more stimulus, so on and so forth. You guys have heard it a million times. Second was very close, it was the cable Y raises, surprisingly. I thought this was actually gonna drive more into the rear delt due to the unique angle, but it actually was a ton of front delt activation as well. So if you guys are trying to get a bang for your buck, get front delt and lateral head all in one exercise, the cable Y raise actually was your best bang for buck, even above that dumbbell shoulder press. I know a lot of people will just hop right into those heavy dumbbell shoulder presses in order to drive as much growth in, growth in your delts. But really, it might be better to do a compound raise where you're able to drive a lot of stimulus and not only your front, but also lateral HUD at the same time. Okay, so final takeaways. There is no right or wrong exercise. All these exercises that I performed, other than let's say the cheat reps, are going to be good, basically, exercises for you to do 
on your shoulder day. You don't have to just do cable ride raises. I think sometimes people conflate, oh, this is the best as the only. That's not the case. You can do all of these exercises and novel stimulus is important. So do your dumbbell work, do your cable work, do even machine raises if you have that at your disposal. Don't just do dumbbell presses, do also Smith presses, also do machine presses. All of these things are gonna give you a slightly different stimulus, which is also gonna induce growth and prevent stagnation. And the very last thing is that when we talk about total stimulus, that eccentric part of the movement, I still believe is extremely important. And so those cable rye raises, especially cable raises in general, provided a greater eccentric stimulus than let's say dumbbells. So if you're trying to get a total cumulative stimulus, the best bang for buck is probably gonna be cables, but still with your dumbbells, try to control that eccentric. It's gonna reduce injury risk. It's gonna increase that total neural drive to the target muscle group. So I hope you guys love this video. I hope you guys are enjoying more of the science data-driven results. I know EMG testing is not perfect, but it can give us some insights into how well we're actually trying to train that target muscle group. So again, make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell notification. I will see you guys on the next video.